Our aim today is to provide some much needed Brexit clarity in these uncertain times. So let's crack on. Well, this week, the government lost three votes in the House of Commons within the space of two hours and won the dubious honour of becoming the first government in history to be found in contempt of Parliament. Labour are, of course, as you'd expect, piling on the pressure with the shallow Brexit secretary telling me on this show last week that a confidence motion in the government would be inevitable if the Brexit vote is lost. Well, joining us now is one of Jeremy Corbyn's most trusted allies and a key member of his inner circle, the Shadow Cabinet Minister, John Trickett. Thank you very much for being with us. Hello. Well, in these very unpredictable times, we're trying to give our viewers a bit of a sense sure. about what might unfold next week. Sure. So, if Theresa May does lose this vote, as we expect her to, will Labour be calling a confidence motion? Let's see what happens. I mean, look, the present focus is on making sure we defeat this really bodged deal which has been presented to the House of Commons. We don't know, though the, the media is saying we, she, we are going to win the vote, whether we win or, or not. We'll then see what our tactics uh, need to be following that. And there's a number of possible scenarios, and I don't think it's possible to guess in advance exactly what's going to happen. Uh, last week on the show, though, the Shadow Brexit Secretary, Keir Starmer, told me it was inevitable that Labour would call a confidence motion if she lost the vote. So what's changed? Uh, nothing has changed. We simply don't know what is going to happen on Tuesday night. And remember, uh, it's quite possible, according to, again to the media, and who knows, that the, the whole vote may be put off and, and that Mrs May goes back to... Uh, your, look, the big question, the big co which is facing the country, is... How, in a democratic society, do we retain c consent of the people? I think the Brexit vote shows that a significant body of people do not consent to the direction in which the country has been going. And I represent, if you like, Brexit Central. One of my seat is one of the strongest Brexit areas. Those people believe that their voice would be listened to and that we would have a proper Brexit, which would put jobs first. That is not what we've got. We've got a deal which is bodged. And um, Mrs May said there's no other alternative. Let's see what happens on Tuesday night. We need to defeat this. And we also, by the way, need to make sure that there's no cliff edge fall up, falling out of Brexit uh, inadvertently with the disaster which would then follow. You're talking there about some pretty big themes, about people mm -hmm. feeling not listened to, disconnected. Yeah. So what I don't understand then is Calling a confidence motion would be Labour's big chance of getting into power. Why would you possibly give that up? Uh, we're not ruling anything out at the present time. I think we need to see what happens on the night. Nobody really knows. Uh, and I've sat with uh, government ministers. You're speaking to some this morning, probably. Nobody knows, but we've got a the, pretty got... clear idea, haven't we? I it's think, going to well, be difficult focus, for us well, to let's... win, isn't it? If you're going on a journey, you need to take one step at a time. And the truth is, we are facing a big moment in our country's history. Let's be honest about it. The first thing is to persuade the country this is the wrong deal, to persuade the House of Commons. When that has happened, there will be a series of votes, probably, um, one of which is to say that there should be, we should rule out, that the House of Commons rules out a deal which simply leaves us falling off the edge. That is quite an important debate as well. What subsequently happens, and exactly how it's choreographed, we need to see. Now, clearly, we have a view as to what ought to happen, but we are not the government, we are not the largest party, and Mrs May still holds most of the cards in relation to what happens after the vote, though I think time is really running out for her. And if you can tell me whether she will be, still be the Prime Minister on Tuesday evening, then perhaps I can tell you what we do what exactly we will do next. So there's a number of scenarios... I wish I could tell you, well, it's my crystal ball. Sadly, I'm not, MP, think, I'm not a member of the uh, Shadow Cabinet. You've got a lot more influence than me. Well, it may be that she doesn't quite know either, by the way. I think things have run out of control. And, look, the whole way in which she's negotiated this has been an absolute disaster from the start. Why would you begin at the, right at the start to say that all these millions of people who have... European citizens who've lived here for many, many years, paid their tax, contributed to our economy, should now become a point of negotiation. I mean, that would cause well, offence from to, day one. To be fair, she said right from the beginning, hasn't she, no, that she wants to guarantee uh, the rights of people already I, here? I don't believe she has from the very beginning, and it caused great offence. If you're the Prime Minister or President of another country, and you've got maybe tens of thousands of citizens working in Britain, you want to know from day one that those jobs and those people are going to be secure here. So, and if 
think the language has been used by some Tories about putting up the white flag and capitulation. It implies that, that Europe is somehow our enemies uh, rather than our allies, friends or long-term neighbours. So you described the negotiation as, as a disaster there. And I have mm. to say, it has been quite an extraordinary week for the government. We've got over 100 Conservative mm. MPs saying uh, that they uh, can't support the Prime Minister's deal. They've become the first government in history to be found mm. in contempt of Parliament. Yeah. So my question to you is, why hasn't Labour had a big lead in the polls. We can have a look at the latest poll, for example. Uh, I know this is just one poll, but an Ipsos Mori poll on Friday, uh, effectively saying that you're deadlocked. If the government is in such disarray, then why aren't you so far ahead? Well, look, I think we've all learnt that the polls are only revealed so much. The polls uh, proved very, very badly wrong in the past in the election. We were at 26 points, I think, when the election was called only last year. That was another disastrous decision by the government, by the way. We finished at over 40 points. Well, I'm not, not sure. If you got another 20 points this time, then you'd be doing better <laughs> yeah, than well, any, any parties that would since be the fine. 1930s. Look, I think the country is genuinely watching what's happening. I think, to some extent, confused and worried, anxious about the future. Look, uh, yeah, and look at the kind of news which is uh, happening all around us, you know, the universal credit, the explosion of wealth for the richest and other people living in very difficult conditions, the United Nations saying there are 15 million of our fellow citizens living in poverty, 250,000 children in Yorkshire in poverty. I mean, a, a government should be able to do several things at once, multitask, but this, can't, this government can't even single task. Now, um, I'm keen to talk to you about uh, Labour's positions. You're talking about you know, people sure. feeling um, uncertain mm -hmm. or uh, concerned. So let's try and find out what Labour's position is. Sure. If there is election, you'll have to tell us then. Um, does Labour support a second referendum? Is that something you would like to see? What we said, and I think you know this, the conference, our Labour Party conference, decided that uh, a second referendum should be one of the options which are available to us. But again, if, if anybody can tell me exactly how this is going to um, emerge over time, then I think we can give you a clear you and concrete shape, answer. You have a chance to of shape we what can. happens, though, haven't you? Of course we can. It's, and it's we not are just doing. about following events. Yeah. This no, is really serious stuff. Yeah, of You've course, got a chance of course. to shape You're it. You're trying to pull me into a what-if question. My, oh, I'm my asking what Labour's policy yeah. is. No, it's a what if, if the vote uh, happens on Tuesday night and we lose the vote... If the, sorry, if the Tories lose the vote, what would then happen subsequently? And I don't think we can say that a referendum is the only possible alternative. And let me explain why. Because, as you know, we said that an election is probably the, our preferred choice. And the reason why we said that is because if a, random, if a referendum were to take place in the present parliament, who's to say that we will get out of the gridlock which the parliament is in? And the election allows us to refresh the mandate, have a conversation with the wider population, and come back to parliament, probably with some new MPs and different point of view and take the argument forward at that stage. So our preferred option, very, very strongly, is that we refresh the parliament, though we are ready to be from a minority government, should that be necessary, and it could happen on Wednesday morning, and to begin to reset the negotiation and take the country forward in a be much better direction. I just want to... Uh, talk a little bit more about this second referendum question because, as you said, you support a seat that voted very happily yeah. for Brexit yeah. uh, in West Yorkshire. Yeah. Um, what do you think the reaction would be by constituents in, in places like where you represent if there was another vote? Well, I think if people feel that a privileged political elite has decided by subterfuge to find a way of reversing the previous referendum, that would causes some difficulty, and rightly so, because I started this discussion with you describing this sense in the country of what on earth's happening, this withdrawal of consent. So I think we need to show to the country that we've been through the various different options uh, and that at some point, if a referendum becomes absolutely necessary, it's at that point that it takes place. And bear in mind this, it can take months, six or seven months, to organise a referendum because there's no law which allows us to do it. So we have to pass a law, we have to decide what the question is, we have to renew the, the, peop the people on the voting lists, and then there has to be a period of time for 
the referendum. So we think the earliest it can take place is probably May or June. We'll have gone past the March deadline which Mrs May has imposed on the country. So there are some issues about a referendum which need to be addressed as well. But look, in the meantime, every day which passes is another day nearer to potential disaster. And we say we need to reset the negotiations straight away on a new basis and come forward with a different way of running our country and its relationship with Europe. Do you, do you think that some MPs from all parties, from Labour, from the Conservatives, um, in southern seats, particularly London, do you think they really understand the sense of betrayal that some voters would feel if there was another referendum? Mm, I can't speak for other MPs, but what I know is de it's visceral, it's deep in people's soul that this country needs to change direction in the, in the constituency I represent, and I think across the North generally. And rightly so, because look what's happening uh, to the communities which were the source of Britain's wealth in the Industrial Revolution over the centuries after that. And now that these areas have been deindustrialized, the jobs which are coming are temporary often, part-time, poorly paid, insecure. Our young people don't have a future unless they move out of the area. And I think all of that uh, weighs heavily on people's minds when they're thinking of the future. I think Brexit was a vote to say we do not like the direction of the country. And so Labour's response has been a big response. We do need to change direction su substantially and fundamentally and head in a new direction to rebuild all those communities. W with all that in mind, yeah. do you want to see us leave the EU now? Um, our line has been that... You're, I'm asking, what, what do you think? What, what's your my, position, my, John my, my view is clear. My history, everybody knows, is I was against the... going into the coal market all those years ago as a young man. Over the years, though, the, the economy has become very tied up with Europe, and therefore I think it's not easy for us dis to disentangle. So my position, and our position, by the way, has been that we need to stay, but we need to do fundamental and radical reform because status quo, things as they are now... So let's you go want on us to before. stay now, even after having the referendum? No, we've decided that we are leaving because we've listened to the people's vote, which was an instruction from the people, a kind of contract between us and the people to accept the decision. So you think but that you we were, should leave? You were asking what our position was uh, at the time of the Oh, no, 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 no I mean, sorry, I, I, I mean your position okay. now. Well, our position is quite clear. We accept the results of the referendum and we think that there is a way through this. And by the way, we think there's a way of not dividing the country. At the moment, we have a, go a government which is trying to divide the country on the lines of how they voted in the referendum. I think there's a way of bringing the country back together again. This, this government has been appalling in the, in the way it's divided people okay. one against the other, and that must stop. OK, John Trickett, thank you very much. Thank you.